What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. I hope you all are doing exceptionally well. I am very, very happy to be rounding out this week. It's been slightly busy, but honestly, it's kind of good to get back into the grind. I had a busy week prior, uh, and so it's nice to get back into the swing of things. We've had a lot of really awesome progress this week that I'm very excited to share with all of you, which I'm sure we will very soon. But right now, we are going to open up this pack of the 2014 core set. Uh, we have actually opened up a good bit of this uh, on the channel so far. Uh, I guess in 300 and so episodes, you're you're going to run into that. But uh, there are still some really awesome cards in this set. So uh, obviously Slivers are a big one. There's Planeswalkers, things like that. Things that I'm really excited and hopefully we will get to open. Uh, it is a core set. So as we go through and kind of determine what our first round draft pick would be, please make sure to keep that in mind because obviously the cards are going to be a little bit lower on the power scale than they would be in a normal expansion. So just keep that in mind as we go along. But our first card here is Zephyr Charge. Uh, it is an enchantment for one and a blue, and you can pay one and a blue, and target creature gains flying until the end of the turn. So uh, there is actually a silly combo with this uh, in Constructed, I suppose, where uh, you basically turn all of your opponent's creatures into illusions uh, and give them the, with illusions, they always, uh, if they're the target of a spell or ability, you have to sacrifice them. Uh, and so in tandem with Zephyr Charge, you actually can wipe out your entire, uh, well, the opponent's entire board, and it's actually really silly. But uh, in draft, this tends to be a fairly bad card. Uh, it's not the worst. Like, it's certainly fine to give some creatures flying, obviously, but it'd be much better to just have a two drop that has flying already uh, than playing an enchantment like this where you have to invest not only a lot of mana, but also a turn uh, in the early game to play it out. So uh, honestly, not a super exciting card in my opinion. There are certainly instances where maybe you can get away with playing it, but I, I don't think that this is a high priority pick, uh, again, in my opinion. Uh, Sentinel Sliver uh, is a 2-2 two -two for one and a white, uh, and Sliver creatures you control have Vigilance. So uh, if you don't know, Slivers are a really interesting tribe. Uh, essentially, Slivers buff all other Slivers, uh, including themselves. So uh, the idea here is that you can play a bunch of really awesome Slivers that do a multitude of things, in this case give Vigilance, sometimes that might be a power and toughness boost, sometimes that might be a different keyword like First Strike or Haste, <coughs> excuse me, but either way, they're always boosting each other, and it's actually a really powerful synergy if you can pull it off, and that tends to be a pretty big caveat, especially in draft. Um, naturally, in constructed, you have a lot more uh, opportunity to really sculpt your deck. Uh, in limited, you don't. Uh, you're very subject to what you're being passed, and not only that, but what actually gets opened in the pack in the first place. And so uh, there's a lot of instances where you can really take some really great slivers in the beginning of the pack and then just not end up in the in the correct deck at the end because you really just didn't get enough of them. Uh, that being said, this is a pretty basic one, but a good one nonetheless. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with upside, so it's a bear plus some, uh, which is kind of the good mark of a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, giving every sliver vigilance uh, is quite good, uh, just because it means you can stay on the offensive without losing your defensive position as well. Uh, that doesn't make this a first pick by any means, but it is certainly better than Zephyr Charge for sure. That being said, we're hopefully going to find something else. <laughs> Uh, Blood Baron uh, is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a black. Uh, sacrifice another creature and it gets plus 2, plus 2 until the end of the turn. So uh, an interesting card, one that I actually kind of like. Uh, it seems a little like innocuous at the on the onset. It's a 2-2 two -two for 3 with some incidental buff, but it's not like it's a surprise. Like, it's obviously on the field. Everybody's going to know about it. Uh, however... There's some incidental stuff that happens with a card like this where uh, because you're able to sacrifice a creature at instant speed because it is an ability, you can do this at instant speed, uh, it makes a lot of like removal on the opponent's side a little bit worse. Uh, it doesn't make it useless by any means, but they target a creature with a murder or a piece of removal, whatever it might be, uh, and you just sacrifice it 
and power up your own creature. So there's a little bit of like a timing issue that your opponent then has to kind of play around. Uh, and not only that, but just in combat, if you're the aggressive deck, it's really, really nice to be able to buff your stuff up uh, depending on how the opponent decides to block and things like that. So uh, I actually like this as a flexibility card much more than Sentinel Sliver. The Sliver has much more upside, obviously, but uh, I tend to lean out of that Sliver deck in core sets. Again, unless I find like a really, really key card, which Sentinel Sliver is not. So, so far, this definitely seems like the pick. Uh, Archaeomancer is a 1-2 two for 2 and 2 blue, fairly expensive. However, when it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, certainly an interesting card and not a bad one, uh, surprisingly. Again, this is a core set we're powered down a little bit. What I like about this, though, is that you can pull basically any really, really high-powered spell you want back out of your graveyard for a second use. Uh, however, I will go ahead and say, in this instance, I'd rather have the really powerful instant or sorcery first. Uh, the reason being, a lot of times you end up in a very creature-heavy deck in a draft. You tend not to want to play too many instants and sorceries. Uh, and so cards like this, while good, uh, can be really, really optimized if you know what the what the really powerful instants or, or sorceries are going to be. So I would not necessarily first pick this, but I would definitely focus on it if I happen to be picking really, really good removal or something along those lines. <clears throat> Uh, Duress is a very classic card. Sorcery for one black. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, and that player discards that card. Pretty straightforward. Uh, unfortunately, uh, much, much better in Constructed than it is in Limited. In Limited, again, as we just said, you tend to focus much more on creatures, and so a lot of the time you'll whiff with a card like this. Or you'll just take like a combat trick or something like that, which is worth taking. I mean, certainly that's not bad for only one mana. However, uh, it's really not a, a high value spell in limited. And it's not something I would really pick unless I was sideboarding it uh, against a control deck or something like that. Well, uh, Pacifism, very good card. Uh, one and a white for an enchant creature, uh, and the enchanted creature cannot attack or block. So uh, this is essentially removal in white. Um, it obviously doesn't technically remove the creature and activated abilities can still be activated. Uh, so that is worth noting. Uh, but that, that not being able to attack or block really, really frees you up to do a lot of more aggressive plays and things like that. Uh, and not only that, but you can just blank some really big, dumb creature. And that's huge, uh, especially in a core set again, where power level tends to be a little bit dimmed down. Uh, pacifism, truly, truly a very efficient way of dealing with a lot of very powerful threats. So definitely the picks so far, uh, without a doubt in my mind. Uh, Deadly Recluse is a 1-2 for 1 and a green. Uh, it has reach and it has death touch. So not only uh, can it block creatures with flying, however, if it deals damage to any creature, uh, immediately that creature will be destroyed. Uh, which is really, really nice. This is actually a very, very powerful two drop, in my opinion. Uh, definitely a high priority pick. I don't think it's as high priority as pacifism. I think I would prefer to have that uh, just because it's much, much more difficult to deal with the pacifism. Uh, you can certainly just remove the recluse, but you can't really just straight up remove uh, pacifism because a lot of times people don't main deck enchantment hate, things like that. So uh, deadly recluse, very powerful two drop, definitely a card I would want. However, I do think Pacifism is a little bit of a safer first pick for now. Uh, Academy Raider is a 1-1 for 2 and a red. It has Intimidate, so it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So while not completely unblockable, it is semi-unblockable, we'll say. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can discard a card, and then if you do, draw a card, so you get to rummage if you'd like. Uh, this card is fine. I don't think it's amazing. It's a little expensive, um, it is very, very good against a lot of decks, obviously, because if they're just a green deck, for instance, uh, this tends to be a very unblockable 1-1. One -one. However, on turn three, it is just a 1-1, one -one, and that's really worth noting. Uh, it does help you dig through your deck, which makes it a little more worth it, don't get me wrong, but you're not going to win necessarily on the backbone of this card, uh, in my opinion, unless somehow you can really get lucky and maybe stack a bunch of stuff onto it or something. But that's a very high risk, high reward kind of play, and I tend to avoid those. 
and so for me, uh, while this isn't necessarily a terrible card, I think Pacifism is very clearly a better pick uh, and a much safer pick uh, as well. So uh, for me, it's going to have to be that over the Raider. Uh, Coral Merfolk uh, is a 2-1 vanilla creature for one and a blue. This does not pass the 2-2 bear test, which is worth noting. Uh, I find this card to be very, very bad. Uh, it is a 2-1 for two, so you're getting the power you need. If you were really in a pinch and you just needed a couple two drops, I guess you could play this, but it's very, very bad. Uh, definitely avoid playing cards like this uh, in any scenario, really. <clears throat> Uh, Mind Rot is a sorcery for two and a black, and very simply, target player discards two cards. So, uh, I actually like Mind Rot. Um, I used to really hate Mind Rot, which was really funny. Uh, however, I've seen in certain circumstances, this being one of them, uh, you can actually get away with it pretty well. So, because, again, we're in a core set, it's going to be a bit slower. You're going to have cards that are going to sit in the hand a little bit longer. Um, it's actually not a bad uh, turn three play to say, okay, opponent, you're just going to have to discard two cards. Uh, maybe that's just two lands, or maybe that's two insignificant cards, but that's two cards that they're no longer going to be able to play. Uh, and you only spent one card to do it. Uh, and that's kind of a very crucial point there, is that you are getting card advantage uh, in a kind of roundabout way because of Mind Rot. And I think that's really important. Uh, I do like it uh, if you can get it out on turn three. It tends to get worse later in the game because you are going to be playing out most of your hand. A lot of times you come down to top decks and stuff in Limited, and so uh, Mind Rot tends to get worse in that scenario. Uh, so I would not run too many of them, and I would not first pick it, but... Uh, definitely a playable card if you're in like a black value deck uh, or something like that. <clears throat> uh, our first uncommon is Gnawing Zombie. It is a 1-3 for 1 and a black. You can pay 1 and a black, sacrifice a creature, and target player loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. So uh, there are almost assuredly n a number of synergies with a card like this. Anytime you see a sacrifice outlet card, you can pretty much bet there's at least one or two cards in the set uh, that... If you take this, you're looking for those cards solely because they synergize extraordinarily well. Uh, that being said, it's a lot of mana for something like that. Uh, you're you're paying two light or two uh, mana, excuse me, and a creature every single time you want to activate this, and it's only draining for one. Uh, now that does add up, and certainly if you can get those cards that synergize, it's probably very very good. However, it's a two card combo, whereas something like Pacifism is kind of just good on its own. You're relying on your opponent having a creature, obviously, but they're going to have a creature. It's limited. So uh, I would prefer to go Pacifism over the Gnawing Zombie. That being said, I actually do think this is a pretty reasonable card. Uh, there are certainly circumstances that would make this good. Uh, but Pacifism, again, just kind of good on its own. So I'd, I'd prefer to go that. It's just a little bit of a safer pick, in my opinion. Uh, Elixir of Immortality uh, is an artifact for one of any color. You can pay two of any color, tap it, and then you gain five life. Uh, shuffle it back into your grave. Shuffle it and your graveyard back into your library. Excuse me. Uh, so this is very much a safe out to mill decks. Uh, it's not a great one, but it does kind of work. Um, I don't love it in limited. Uh, I really don't love it in a lot of circumstances, to be honest. However, uh, being able to the the value here is being able to shuffle everything back into your deck that is in your graveyard. You get a second use out of everything. Uh, and that does put you leagues ahead of your opponent, depending on what's in your graveyard. So there are instances where this probably is very good, uh, but very clearly pacifism is just a much better card to, to pick first. Uh, Artificer's Hex is an enchant equipment uh, for one black. At the beginning of your upkeep, if the enchanted equipment is attached to a creature, destroy that creature. So very interesting card here, very focused on uh, enchanting the opponent's equipment to basically render it useless. I don't love a card like this because it's just such a roundabout way to kill creatures. Uh, generally speaking, you just want to get like the murder effect, kill target creature or pacifism, blank a creature, you know, like those kinds of things are much, much better than something like this where you equip the equipment and then if they equip the equipment to the creature, then the creature will die, but only on your up. Like, it's just very, very strange. Uh, very much uh, an unexciting card, in my opinion, and definitely not one that I'm interested in. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and our rare here is Sanguine Bond. So it's an enchantment for three and two black, and whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So uh, interesting card. I don't think it's a limited card, really. 
Uh, it certainly can be. There are instances where it's good. For instance, uh, we saw the, uh, what was it, the gnawing zombie there. Uh, you do gain life off of that, so it's going to deal an extra point there. Uh, and I'm sure there are plenty of other synergies. However, uh, turn five is a pretty big turn, and you really want to be able to, to play something that's going to affect the board immediately, in my opinion. Um, certainly, if you have the setup deck for it, go for it. But I don't think I would first pick this. This is much more of a really, really solid commander card or something like that, uh, without a doubt. But uh, I think pacifism is a better safe pick. Uh, that is, we did not get a foil or anything like that, so that's it for this one. I honestly think pacifism is the pick. Uh, generally, we don't go with a common right off the bat, but pacifism is a very good one. And again, remembering that this is a core set, so we're looking at a little bit of a simpler uh, card pool, things like that. So uh, that's just my opinion. Feel free, uh, as always, to disagree in the comment section below. Maybe we can have a conversation about it. I'm happy to do that. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.